Hello, 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 welcome. Um, so, yes, it is Natasha Makes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you've had a fabulous Christmas um, and that you are full and feeling wonderful. Now, today, 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 we have got something slightly different for you. I really wanted to show you some fabrics that are back in stock and some that are new. Now, this week, you know that we have had 15% off across the website. So do check that out. We've got a few exceptions, haven't we, as Wiz? Is Wiz is in a the few. corner, a few here and there, um, but on all your pre-cut fabrics and stuff like that, or cut to order fabrics, I should say, they are fifteen percent off. Pop it in your basket. There is a very very long code that SJ has made for this. A very very long one. Very very long code. I think it's mm -hmm. NM. I want to say twenty. To Xmas 15 off. It's going to be on the banner at the top of the website. So they won't. Because I forgot to it. write it down before we go to it, but it's Real? definitely on the banner at the top of the website. So do check out that and do use that um, code so that you get your 15% off. Um, <laughs> yeah, whoops. So today we are going to go into in a bit a, um, an interview that I did with Lisa Chandler. Now if some of you have seen it before, but it's just a great um, interview for you to in well to introduce Lisa. Lisa Chandler, we started stocking her fabrics a couple of years ago. We met over Zoom. Actually, we met through John Cole Morgan. So I will be ever forever grateful to him for that. And you know when you just hit it off? Well, no, first of all, you know when someone says to you, is you'll have had this, mm. when someone says to you, oh, you must meet such and such, you've got so much in common, you'll get on so well. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Do you? Well, yes. You're doing better than me because half the time I'm like, oh, really? And I get really, I get really anxious about it and then... Well, that's what happened with you. Oh, with me? Yeah, Ian was like, oh, you'll have to meet Natasha. She's so lovely, you'll get on so well. And I was like... Uh, does she want to meet me though? Yeah. Does she no, really I kept want asking to meet me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we did, and it's all turned yeah. out beautifully. But often I get a bit like, oh, will we? But we really did. We hit it off completely, me and Lisa. And so she's very kindly let me stock her, her fabrics here in the UK. They are not readily available across the UK. They are mainly here at Natasha Makes. The old people might have the bit, skiddly bit here mm -hmm. and there, but we are certainly the largest stockist of Lisa Chandler fabrics in the UK, which is very, very exciting for us, which means that we can make such things as this. Is I have got kits for these on mm -hmm. a discount. If you want to make mm. a grey version of this, this is the twisted knitting bag. These are with a massive discount on the website for you today because it's Christmas. That's the pattern that you're getting in with it. You just need to add in your style rule fix or your um, whatever of your choice. Interfacing. That's that. interfacing. interfacing. Interfacing of your choice. Um, Oh, look, apparently I've got been overexcited and got two of those kits out ready for you. But that is what it will make. They'll make the grey version of that. Now, these are back in stock. You have been asking and asking and asking for us when these were becoming back in stock. So if you want 15% off your gorgeous Lisa John fabrics, today is the day to take advantage of that code. I'm going to go close up because I want you to see just how glorious these fabrics are. If you've never had any of the Lisa Chandler fabrics before, do go and take a look because they're all screen printed. I don't know if you knew this history. They're all screen printed in, um, in a mill in Japan. Yeah, you told me that. The first time I came, Natasha told me all about it and I was like, yeah. oh my God, I know what screen printing is. Yeah, it's so exciting. And it's very, very beautiful. Um, so the last screen that goes on with Lisa's, with Lisa's fabrics is the gold, which is why mm. it is so prominent. Um, but it doesn't, you know how with some glitter, it sort of, or gold, it sort of sits on the top and feels rough. Mm. It feels smooth. You can't actually feel it. It's like all of the other dyes that are in there. It just is smooth. So we have finally got the green, uh, the green and the gold back in stock. We have also, and I know you've been waiting for this, the cream and the gold also now back in stock. Um, these have come directly from Japan. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took two of us to carry the box in. Oh. Yeah. And we get it straight from Japan to cut down mileage so that it doesn't go to Australia where Lisa is and then to us. But this, ladies and gents, is is the exciting thing. I don't know if we've even got this before, Lisa. 
This is a brand new colourway. It's gorgeous. In your Melba fans. And this is Periwinkle. Mm. I want this in everything. Mm. I want this for everything. I, and, and the really lovely thing is that I've seen this from conception, from when Lisa went, I think I'm going to do a blue, what do you think of this? And I went, uh, yes, please. <laughs> and you can send it direct from Japan straight to me, thank you. <laughs> please and thank you. And she did. Oh, love that. Mm. Love that. This is now available. Cut to order by the half metre. And as ever, if you buy more than one increment, we will cut it in one continuous length. Right, you, Izzy? I will. Yay! I will. <laughs> that is the, uh, I was going to say the Royal Wee. Now, you see this little folder? Show for Lisa to wear on the 28th. Gemma Lala did this for me. She's so organised. Do you know what she's gone and done? What has she done? She has gone through all of our folders and she has found for me all of the patterns that have never been loaded yet. Wow. Mm. And she's gone, hang on, why aren't these loaded? Is that what I was saving them for show? So, no! People can have a chance. But righty ho. So if you would like to get your 3D Christmas tree, that's a stunner. Then we've got a pattern for that. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Um, the Asian screens is rather gorgeous. Well, you can't see it. Like, hang on, I'm going close up. I'm going in. See, they're still in their packets. That's your Asian screens there. Bit gorge, right? Bit gorgeous. Lovely. I did one of those with um, with the Tildes. I love Tilda. Stunning. This is your Botanica. I thought we'd done this one. Maybe we haven't. But yeah, that is your Botanica. And again, you can buy the fabrics here at Natasha Makes. Centre stage is rather fabulous. We will be demoing these at some point. So if you want to get ahead and get the patterns, that is fabulous. Lady Grey, we've had kits for Lady Grey in the past. And it's beautiful because that lovely border stripe that we have, look. Spot the Waratah. That's what we have. And because it's got all the different size borders, that's your outer border, middle border, inner border. Because it's Lisa designing with her own fabric, she makes the most of those border stripes beautifully. Um, so we've got that. Matilda's medallions is definitely one that we're going to be doing this year. I love this. We've even got Lisa's sample here, which is very exciting. Oh. It's a big one. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Um, the Melba Kaleidoscope. I really want to do this. Ooh. Isn't it gorgeous? I really like that. Yeah. I like the red. Yeah. It's a ready orange and it's just beautiful. And then your Nouveau fans, we're a fan of the fans. We are waiting on more of this gorgeous tile print to come in. Once that tile print is in, because we've sold out, uh -huh. we will be on it. This is my favorite, is the peacock through the window. I just love that. that well, I've got nice. a thing about peacocks, haven't I? Mm. Yeah. What about your portrait window? So if you've got, any of the um, ba -ba 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 project panels from Lisa Chandler, then this is the one, absolutely stunning. And it uses those with that beautiful Waratah. This is in the ivory, beautiful. What about Southern Jewels 2? We've done Southern Jewels 1. Southern Jewels 2 is there. Your summer pack, I love these. You could use these as screens almost, couldn't you? They're just mm. gorgeous. And then your sunburnt country, well, I mean, Lisa does live in Australia. That would be sunburned for you every day, wouldn't it, Wiz? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Says our pale pre raphaelite beauty in the corner. <laughs> um, through the window, so every time that we have a panel and you go, don't know what to do with the panel, this. This is what you can do with a panel. Mm. Or something with a border. Gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. I love panels. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh. Or if you wanted to do a central piece there and um, and do it with some K facet. Mm. You know how we do the applique with the florals? Oh, yeah. Is it steam that you yeah. use? Yeah. You're learning fast. I might do that. I might do that. I might 
do that pattern and then put all of those around there. Oh, leave it with me. <laughs> Weekend at Melba's. So, um, the Melba collection was uh, Lisa's remit for it was what would happen if Dame Nellie Melba, the opera singer, and William Morris had a night together? What would the <laughs> fabric love child be? Um, and bearing in mind that Lisa grew up in and around Dame Nellie Melba's old house. She knew the colourways, she knew the patterns, she knew what it was like, and that is how the Melba collection was born. So, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, that's how these fabrics came about. They are absolutely stunning. So we have got her patterns here in the UK, ready to go. If you'd like to know more about the lady herself, please carry on watching. SJ has done something whizzy so that it carries on into um, her interview. Bearing in mind, obviously, it's done on Zoom because she's in Australia and with lockdown and everything, we've never actually met. Hmm. That's my hope for 2023. I'd like to actually meet Lisa in the flesh. That would be cool. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? So, grab your um, bundles for that. Grab the brand new Periwinkle. If you need to stock up on any of her fabrics for today, you've got 15% off. Grab any of the new patterns that tickle your fancy. Um, and we will see you very shortly. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Keep watching. Good morning, everybody. Uh, look who's with me. Actually, you, you might not know. You might not know. But every time that on the shows I reference Lisa Chandler, this is the lady. Good morning. Good morning. Well, afternoon, actually, Natasha. Well, yeah, you're evening. You I'm that had to get up early. You had to get up early for me. So mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, no, absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, so, Lisa, when we do these interviews, there's generally lots of goodies on the website, www.natashamakes.com, so that everybody can go and look at your fabrics there. But when I've done these interviews in the past... It's been with the likes of Kay from Brandon and Philip Jacobs and people like that. You're in good company. Good company. No pressure. Yeah, no, 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 no pressure. But <laughs> often people already know quite a bit about them. Right. But the beauty here is that not that many people in the UK until now might have heard of you. So we can kind of start from the very beginning which is a and we can make it up no no you don't get to make it up because you know <laughs> <That's gonna> be <laughs> <real>. <laughs> well, you can if you like we can't fact check <laughs> you've just got to remember that's what they say is that liars are going to have good memories so <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, no, but you're right it's it's lovely because um so often you know I'm trying to get a different angle or something like that but actually for this it's it's really beautiful for me because I can go right Lisa from the very beginning you didn't start out in textiles did you no not as not as a profession so I started sewing early it skipped a generation it was it was that classic my grandmother taught me to sew story yeah, yeah, yeah. And Same. I was wheeling and dealing, selling um, felt mice and pomanders from about the age of 12. Nice. But <laughs> somewhere in the middle there, I fell in love with food and science. So I did a double degree in food science and technology and um, worked for some fantastic companies like Kraft Foods, um, spent a lot of time in the UK for work as well for a company based in, in uh, Mould near Chester. So I had, you know, that was about 12 years of my career. So it was dairy, working with McDonald's, lots of different companies. Um, but like with a lot of people, when you decide to have children. Ah, life changes, right? Uh, <laughs> your hobby can kind of become your, <laughs> your hobby becomes your profession. So um, when I uh, I kept working after I had Phil, he's now 23, and then I had Steve. Two boys. Yeah, two boys. So um, it's somewhere in the middle there I started teaching for stress relief. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going for you now? <laughs> stress, <laughs> for stress release and relaxation and colour color therapy, um, started working in a little patch workshop and then uh, I remember just before I had Steve, we were making uh, pinned up Christmas trees and I was trying to get around the students, you know, with the with the baby tummy and all that sort of stuff. 
And then they wanted to see me with the baby afterwards. So they sort of followed me home. Um, <laughs> Pied Piper of quilters. <laughs> yeah, and sort of arrived with pies and casseroles and saying, here, we'll hold the baby and do the washing and then you can show us what you're working on. And that's literally what happened. Wow. So I started teaching from home then when Stephen was about 14 weeks old. Um, and he's now a strapping six foot two, 19 year old. So that's, that's where it started. And then the whole, we had a shop in our house and it was getting completely out of control. So we moved out into a shop. Nothing was ever planned, Natasha. Nothing. No, 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 never is. Nothing's Best ever things planned. Never are. No, but hey, what, what I found as I went was my passion and my inspiration was cultural influence. So architecture textiles which is sort of a bit like cave as well but you know that yeah. whole um looking at patterns and mosaic tiles looking at japanese kimonos all of that so when we went out into a shop i said right i'm not just going to have a bit of everything <laughs> i want a trip around the world for my quilters so i wanted everything to have a cultural influence and there was a lot of beautiful japanese designs just coming onto the market but what I didn't bet on was the girls walked in the door and went, well, where's the Australian designs? And there wasn't, there wasn't anything um, that was really relevant. So we found this little gap. But that's the short story. The long story is I couldn't draw. <laughs> I didn't know anything about textile design. Well, you also went so, to work with Robert Kaufman, didn't you? I did, I did. So I learned how to draw. And because I had... I was the biggest seller of Robert Kaufman in Australia in, in, in metallics, in oriental prints and everything. So I had, I started to get an understanding of, sorry? Was that through your shop that you had? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. So the shop that grew out of your, out of your house became. It grew into a, it grew into a sh an out shop three blocks from the house. So, um, <laughs> So I started to study the way they do collections and you would know this, you'd have a border print and then you'd have a big panel and then a small one. So I started to get an, an idea of the formula that they used and um, had a great friend teach me how to draw. And uh, when the Robert Kaufman International Sales Director came to Australia on his annual trip, he flew from Sydney down to Melbourne to meet me to go, what, who is this girl? and Why is she selling, you know, all this, all this stuff? So he came and met me and I sneakily just showed him what I'd been working on. Um, and he said, you need to show people. So that's, that's what happened. But I didn't send it in. I sat on it for another year. And then my husband, Rob, got sick of me and he said, just book a ticket. Just, just go. <laughs> so I booked a ticket to America for a five minute meeting in Pittsburgh. Amazing. Amazing. And, and, it was just the right place at the right time, but we gave them an imperial look. So that meant they appealed to everyone. And which design was that? Which did you go so with? So that's under the Australian sun. So that's that's the botanical range that so you The botanical got. range, you spent two years learning to draw botanically correct flowers. You, so you don't you never do anything by halves it's not well you know well, a quick sketch here looks a bit like it that's okay nah but you have to, the pressure was on Natasha because my parents were pretty much Australian plant greenies hippies <laughs> in the 70s <laughs> and um I spent my childhood giving out free plants to people in housing estates to replant the natural indigenous plants that had all been dug up when they built their houses. So I grew up again, you know, amongst pedigree experts and Australian plants. So, I, you know, I couldn't, I had to do it correct. I mean, so, Melbourne's so You different. are actually a botanical artist, you see, because this is it. Philip Jacobs told me off for calling him a botanical artist. He's like, I'm not a botanical artist, Natasha. I'm a fabric, uh, a fabric designer. Um, but for me, like his florals are so beautiful. I'm like, how can anybody draw florals like that and not consider themselves a, a botanical artist? But now speaking to you, I realize it's because his aren't necessarily botanically correct, whereas yours are, and you get yours checked by a botanist. I love this. 
botanist I've known since I was five years old. Yes. <laughs> um, and but then also when you're designing them, I work from several sources. So I'll work with um, botanical uh, botanical drawings and paintings, either from the Arboreum archives here in Melbourne, or um, just you know from from records of the first the first botanist like banks that came through with Captain Cook and stuff. There's a lot of material that's available to look at historically how they were represented and then through to modern day you know correct so if you mix that up with and then I'll go and take a heap of photos at the Australian Botanic Gardens to get the layout and the positioning that I want so you kind of merge you merge a few different things together to um to get them to work it's phenomenal I mean the you've got one you've got one in the square just above your head it looks like you're wearing a botanical crown which is beautiful oh yeah this one yeah 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 Gorgeous. And I've got one down here. And the, here we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Snap. Oh, I have a small person at the door. <laughs> Freddie, if that's you, I'm on a work call, darling. Oh, yeah. You're up super <laughs> early. Can you go and play with kittens or watch TV or something, please? The kittens can go in the sitting room with you, yes. <laughs> now go. <laughs> run, 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 run. The joy of the electronic babysitter. I thought we'll get this yeah. done nice and early on a Sunday morning so the kids will be asleep. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. Oh, bear with me a minute. Freddie, yes, they can. You just have to shut the door. Hopefully we will edit this bit out. Edit one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? The joy, right? The joy from home living. But do you know what? I do feel a lot better about it since I saw like the one of the BBC news anchors um, end up with a, you know, a child wanting a snack. In <laughs> that went viral. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's life now, right? That is life. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Can I have the kittens? Can I have a snack? Can I do this? Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, where were we? So botanically correct and all rather beautiful um, in gorgeous colorways. And so did Robert Kaufman then, um, did he then print your designs for you and take you on as a designer within his house? How did that work? Yeah, so, um, so Robert Kaufman, I don't think they've got, I don't know how many they've still got now, but we, you're a licensed designer. Right. So, so you submit, so as time went on, I did about eight collections with them. So you, you submit the collection, well, you, you run it by the design director first. Then you take the risk of spending three to four months kind of throwing out the design and the collection and sending it in, um, hoping that they're going to like it and that they'll run with it. So I was I was really lucky. We we had a good run. So, um, and then the way that it works is is well, as a, as a licensed designer, you get paid per yard printed. So that's that's the way it works. But you don't have you don't have complete control ah. over everything. Right. So sometimes <laughs> we're going to fight the battles here, aren't we? Because you need, you know where I'm going, you yeah. need to win the war. So the first collection through, they decided to do a third colorway compared to what I had wanted and put it onto chocolate brown with pink. And it did not, it did not sell in Australia, but it sold well elsewhere. So so I sort of just had to, as long as I got what I wanted, then you ran with these other ones. But then there was um, the first the first lot through that came through with my gum leaves, my little gum nuts, and you know what they look like now. They came back kind of as red holly berries because oh. they decided that they didn't look that good and oh. um, they'd be better in red. And I'm like, oh. no. And then we got uh, flannel flowers in blue. Gum nuts. Yeah, so those little gum nuts on there came back kind of as red berries. Oh, 
No, don't so think so. Mechanically correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and these. Okay, so this is these. I've got his, these here to cut a kit to do something for you. But um, these are these are called flannel flowers because they feel like flannel. Oh, so wow. that is their actual size. They're they're quite big. They're at least two inches across, and they feel beautiful. They're like velvety soft and they're they're a precious thing because they've got to have just the right conditions um, in southern Australia to grow so this is like our edelweiss if you like it's our pure white flower that that we love and mix in with uh, you know other bouquets and they came back and said oh we think it's quite boring we're going to print it in blue and I said no can't mess with the flowers purple no. <laughs> so, you know, we had we had fun. I actually had the one of the one of the Kaufmans ring me about this this problem. And it was okay, okay, Ken, I don't know how to describe to you how important it is and how symbolic Australian flowers are to Australians because we're not particularly attached to our flag. We've got a red you know red white and blue flag is our national flag and then we have green and yellow for the olympics and then we've got all different things going on um but i don't mess with the flowers and he <laughs> said well i need a really good example and i said okay i find the american flag boring so i'm going to print it in purple orange and green and there was just dead air <laughs> and i thought what have i done what have i done and he Look, said get it <laughs> okay i've got it the flowers stay white <laughs> so thank you <laughs> so but look it was it was a i shouldn't say it was a fantastic journey with them and i learned so so much and it's such an amazing relationship to work so closely with people on the other side of the world for me you know it's a really personal intimate thing to hand over your artwork yeah and ha have other people handle it through to the factory you know yeah. there's an immense amount of um trust and understanding required so, so that with your botanicals there's a lot of beautiful um gold and silver work through them mm. has that been on it from day one yeah and was that at yeah. your insistence it was yes it was at my insistence at the start because for me to be able to give them a range that would have a worldwide appeal not just to Australia because we're talking about printing I mean you've got to print 3,000 meters of each design so if I you know it it's it's a big big run so it couldn't at that stage we didn't know what was going to happen we couldn't just bring all that to Australia yeah. they couldn't risk it for that it had to appeal worldwide so I gave it a really imperial look so that it would, you know, to someone overseas that didn't know they were Australian, it would sit next to Japanese chrysanthemums or orchids or um, flowering eucalyptus gum looks like cherry blossoms sort of thing. So so to me it, it had to have the, the metallic on it for it yeah. to do that. And, and it did. I mean, it went into Spain and Russia and all over the place. So... So you are, I mean, you are a, a worldwide artist, but for some reason, we haven't had a lot of it in the UK until now. No. And this, no. is, this is my absolute joy and pleasure to be able to bring it to the UK. Um, and there is a richness and a lusciousness. I, for those that don't know the story, um, our friend John said you two should meet and you know when in, that in a very in his normal pushy way yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. Set up a meeting immediately to to make that happen and um and i'm always cautious when someone says you will yeah. love such and such <laughs> but he was right yeah, don't yeah <laughs> yeah he did do that and we're like don't tell us girls what you think what what, what we want we know <laughs> what we want you can't tell us what we want and i think within the first 10 minutes I don't think we really heard a peep out of John, which is unusual. No, he didn't laugh, didn't he? He just left the meeting. Yeah, he just yeah, left. yeah. And we just carried on chatting. But when he first showed me your fabrics, I walked around for the next week with the biggest smile on my face going, they're amazing, they're amazing. I was showing them, everyone that works with me, I'm like, look at this, it's phenomenal. Look at this, it's not in the UK. Can you believe it? It's phenomenal, it's so beautiful. 
And I've had the same reaction. So when we first met and when I first bought your fabrics, I hadn't felt it. I hadn't actually. No, you had not I'd only seen it on a screen. Um, and I, I ordered a lot from you thinking, I think I trust this woman because <laughs> she's, <laughs> yeah, you may well giggle now, uh, <laughs> because she's a perfectionist. Like everything that you do, you absolutely do it spot on. I'm like, I can work with this woman. I can really work. Uh, you know, I admire you. I, I love your designs and I love your ethic. And I just think, yeah, absolutely spot Aww, on. Thanks, Nat. You take up three of my evenings a week now too. <laughs> I can't believe it. So Lisa, for those of you who don't know, Lisa makes her family, these big strapping boys in her life, she makes them sit down and watch Natasha makes with all of you guys <laughs> of an evening. Well, it's not me, it's them. Um, yeah, because Steve's here on a Tuesday night, right? So you air at, uh, I think it's 7pm our time. So he's here for dinner on a Tuesday night. So um, even today, I saw him today and he goes, right, so I'll be home for dinner tonight and then like dinner and Natasha on Tuesday night. Like it's just a thing now to sit. But it's such a novelty for us to see. Like you've got that quilt behind you on the wall and it's just so weird to see it. Well, not weird, but it's it's such a novelty to see it hanging there. It's very funny. It's It's just beautiful. When we had a show a few weeks ago and your fabrics and your samples arrived mid-show, <laughs> I had to stop everything to open it. And um, my mum said to me afterwards, she messaged me, she said, you looked like you used to when you woke up on Christmas morning. Aww. Your stocking was at the end of your bed. She said, that was the look on your face. She said, I know that you truly love these fabrics. I'm like, yeah, no, I truly love these fabrics. They're just phenomenal. Aww. So, well, that, for every, yeah, but for everything that you like about them, it's probably about eight hours of tears and just heartache <laughs> for me getting them right. For which we are very grateful. Because <laughs> I'm not trained. It takes me, it still takes me longer. So when we get down to final colouring, the, the fabric agent team that I work with, um, so, so, so you understand there's like a, there's a triangle. So there's a fabric agent company and they're based um, in LA and they are just the experts at interpreting artwork, finding and communicating between, I mean, obviously I don't speak fluent Japanese, so you need a go between. <laughs> They they are magical people, and um, again a long term relationship. So it goes to them, and then it goes then it goes into the factory. So um, it's just yeah, it it's a very it's a very privileged thing. It's a privileged thing to do, um, but it just takes a lot. A long yeah, time. because uh, you know the, the the years that you spent with Robert Kaufman have basically acted as an apprenticeship for you in, in many. Oh, yeah. ways. And now you're yeah. out doing it for yourself. Yeah, Thanks true. Because, doing it for oh, yourself. The first, the first time we did a run through and I was out on my own, you know, we got about four steps of the process down the way and I got really cocky and went, I don't know what they did because, you know, it, it just, I know what I'm doing. Oh, no, get to step, steps five, six, seven and eight. Oh, I went, oh, this is what they used to do. And then I hit this massive learning curve. But it still takes me twice as long to take 16 colour screens and go, right, increase that one 20%, drop that one 15%, take that one more yellow. Like it, that part of the process is just yeah, tough. Wow. wow. And does and that get happen? it wrong? Does that happen a with lot. the colour agent or does that happen with the does that have does that happen with both? That yeah, that happens that happens with the fabric agent. Um because they're fluent. And in the so uh, yeah, and then they they give all of that instruction to the factory um as needed. I mean the main gentleman at the factory does speak English, but there's a language that's spoken in fabric converting that I still don't. <laughs> I still don't have it. You know, the first time it was like, okay, we're going to do a 45 degree repeat double drop. And I'm going, I don't know what we're talking about. So there is still that, um, 
that language component there. This negotiation sometimes as well, because I'm not very good at fitting all my colors into 15 screens plus metallic. So I um really? I cause problems. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then like a like a kung fu movie sometimes. And the gentleman in Japan go, ah, oh, we may need to impl implement the 16th screen. 16th screen. It's like this mythical extra screen because Lisa's created headaches and <laughs> we have to put another screen in. So, which is not supposed to be there. But, you know, we airbrush now too. So, yeah. That, no, um, I was trying to explain this the other day to everyone because with fabrics unless they are digitally printed which is the likes of um tim holtz and people like that they will digitally print yeah it's a lot more expensive though isn't it to do whereas yeah it has become really expensive to digitally print and uh, one of the reasons for that is the base cloth has to be different right so the actual cloth that they digitally print on to avoid um bleeding through and things it's very different. So uh, Jason in the beginning, you know, those guys, they've all, they've all perfected that. And that's some of them, that's all they do now is digital. It's very hard to kind of plan, plan your ranges back and forth. I kind of feel that once people commit to digital printing, they don't go back to screen. And it's a very different okay. development um, process as well. Um, but yeah, the to get that gradual colour is uh is 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 harder to do um with screen printing like i do than digital but now we're airbrushing yeah so which... there are only a couple of factories in japan that yeah. do this airbrushing and you've lucked out you've found i say lucked out through hard work and determination <laughs> and, and detective work yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> uh dear stalker hat and, and uh magnifying <laughs> glass at the ready um you have track down one of only two factories in japan where this can be done so just expect you have um each screen gives a wash of another color yeah but in between what are you now doing well what i believe happens because <laughs> until i can get to japan to actually like it's almost it's almost rude for me to ask japan, japan directly because it's such a big thing so i kind of get a little snippets and I'm learning from what my fabric agent team tells me we can and can't do how it works but so we've got 16 screens and the 16th is the metallic so the metallic goes down last and that's really important because uh, people say why do you put that down last surely you put the outline down first so that it's easier to see what they call the registration which is making sure all the different layers um, line, line up, up together mm -hmm. but you've got to put the metallic gold i'm digressing now but you're going to put the metallic gold down last if you print over the metallic gold it actually changes the the color of the metallic gold um is that and why it throws me sometimes sorry is that why yours sparkles and some other people's don't i'm not i'm not sure but definitely it's got to go on last if you uh, we've just done this new color that you're getting before me in the eucalyptus flowers in in the aqua um <laughs> i don't even know how that happened but anyway i don't um, know so what, about it. <laughs> what what happens with that when it's just a short run to do as a sample um sometimes they have to just they just throw down the gold and put the colors over the top but it throws me every time because when you put the blue over the top of the gold it comes up copper uh, it changes the color of the gold and i have to you know i have to get my brain in the right frame that I don't look at the copper and just the blue um, but what happens is now they they screen print and with the same color they can airbrush over the top so you lay down one color and then there's the follow-through airbrush over it I believe so if you've got this solid color then you can gradually fan it out um, with or shade it out with an airbrush over it so you just get um, you get, I'm just thinking if I've got, hang on, I think, oh yeah, this one is. You just get these amazing, you can get really amazing effects on them. They're on, they're on the butterflies, Natasha, and then they maybe look next time crazy. when we show the girls the, um, those big oriental fans. Yeah, they do look through. But you just get this beautiful, gradual, you see the blue? 
Yeah. So when the when the girls get these home, they'll be able to see it sort of, it's not a distinct um, screen print. There is a shading to it that's been done with airbrush. I just think they're amazing. I really do. They do, they do they look 3D. They look phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, the next challenge. Yes. In a new range is we're doing an ombre, like a shaded ombre colour change in the background for the Japanese range. Mm. And that will use that'll use the airbrush. So they'll lay down different screens, they have different shades of teal, and they'll soften off um, where it changes colour with the airbrush over the top. That is very clever. That is very Evidently. clever. So the first range that you went out on your own with, was that under the Australian sun? No, no. Um, under the Australian sun's on its 11th year this year, seen imprint for 11 years. Wow, that's phenomenal. So, so many textile artists, they do a run and then you, you don't see it again. Like that's it, it's gone. Yeah. But yours has a timeless element to it, which is just beautiful. Well, it's been, yeah, and look, it's been lovely because because we, it's Australia. So everyone always wants Australian prints to make quilts to send overseas or for wedding presents or, so it's always got a symbolic meaning here. Um, I think it was kind of one of the first print collections that went out with Australian flowers. There's lots here now, but they're not, they're more modern and more contemporary in what they look like, which is great. Then Quilters have got lots of different styles and designs to choose from. Um, no, we didn't, under the Australian sun, we did four, four re-release or re, re-jigged collections of under the Australian sun with Kaufman. And then we did the Culture Club, which was Dutch, Indian and Russian. And I'm about to start that up again and we're going to go into different cultures with that and revisit some of those and this is so then we on your own you're gonna you're gonna revisit various places of the world and yeah. do a, and a culturally inspired yeah collection i can't wait yeah so dutch is all is all of course delftware china wear of and course. things like that yeah um an indian is um sari designs and tassels and jewels it's just really really rich. lovely um really rich that was that was really good Japanese later this year um Tibetan like just the colors and everything are just gorgeous so the girls can literally go on a trip and learn about different cultures when we do the fabric ranges but Melba was my to answer your question Melba was the first one we did on our own now Melba was um what would happen if let me get this <laughs> uh Nellie Melba the opera singer and yes. William Morris spent yes. the night together. What would yes. their fabric love child be yeah. like? In the House of Liberty, they spent the night in the House of Liberty. Oh, in the House of Liberty. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that we had a destination as well. I mean, it's all yeah. going on. <laughs> this is the love child. I just so, I love that. Is that the brief? I mean, is was that was the, that was my brief to myself. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, look, I had a. I had a lovely personal connection with the history of um, Dame Nellie Melba as a teenager because uh, I, I sort of grew up, my parents had a farm near where Dame Nellie Melba's um, Australian home was so here called Coombe Cottage. And um, her granddaughter, uh, Lady Vesti, befriended my my mum when I was about 16. Mum worked in a shop and we used to go to, to Dame Nellie Melba's home, just wow. personally just us. And um, I had full reign to walk around the house while they were having a cup of tea. Now it's all very tourism and you have to queue and book tickets and everything to go. But you um, just wandered. I just wandered. So the colours, like the colours in the quilt behind you, they... Um, the, these ones or the, the grey? Yeah, they kind of represent Dame Nellie Melba's bedroom to, to an extent. That teal colour that I've used throughout is what the silk panels on her wardrobes were. Um, but, but also it's it's indicative of the colours of that era, so about 1920. So that's why it's silver, not gold. And uh, those colours work. And then the other part of the story in the designs is her father was an amazing um, builder. So Dame Nellie Melba's father, Major Mitchell, built our Royal Exhibition Buildings in Melbourne 
This is your history lesson for the day. Yeah, no, no, um, for um, in 1988 for Queen Victoria's, you know, that huge world exhibition yes. that went round the world. Yeah. So a lot of the designs in that large panel print are taken from that building here in Melbourne. It's one of the only a couple that survived the wars and things. So um, a lot of those designs of you, when you come to Australia, I will take you and Adam to the um, <laughs> to the building. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, um, the first show that I did at the Craft Store, Ho Chand or whatever you want to call it, um, <laughs> with your fabrics, Adam, who was the, the show's presenter for that hour, <laughs> by the end of the hour, we were planning a road trip around Australia. Really? We had people emailing in from Australia saying, come here, we'll show you this, we'll show you that. So it's all happening. Uh, and apparently Adam's coming too, which is great. So... <laughs> you know nice to have come sure. on a road trip right so <laughs> it's all going on uh so we've got uh, yeah and then there's also the black colorway isn't there the black and the oranges yeah. and what well, i've got some of the oranges here i don't know if i've got here have you got some oh yeah like that so where did this yes. colorway come from yeah, that colorway we called Australis. So that was more indicative of um, real, you know, Outback Australian colors as well. And that comes on a black as well. And I had to put black in because um, Dame Nellie's bathroom is that, you know, that classic black and white tiles. And um, yeah, and she had little touches of burnt orange and red through it. And it was just beautiful. I mean, the house was amazing, Natasha. When I went, you could go to her dressing table and her hair was still in the brush, like everything had been left wow. Wow. as it was when she was there. It was just, it was incredible. There's a lot of other designs from that house I would like to do that aren't necessarily Australian. There was peacock wallpapers from Italy and, oh, incredible. Oh, so, amazing. yeah, just gorgeous. But, wow. um, but that, yeah, that was the one that we did, our first one on our own is the textile pantry, so. So that's, it is it's special they're like your babies you know well when you put that much time and effort and love and thought and all of those things go into yours it's not like you're just churning them out because because you've got a deadline you know these these happen yeah. because you know you have a love and you spend the time doing your background research and you know I mean even the fact that you spent two years learning to be able to draw in order to do this I absolutely take my hat off to you so after Melba what came after that Summer Palace so Summer Palace we're just starting to get snippets of uh, she says looking around this is where you and I go where's the Summer Palace where's the Summer Palace I've got some oh I've got some fans I've got this. I'm part way through my bag. I've got some of the fans. Oh, well done. That looks awesome. I've got to, I've just got to sew in the, so I've just started to baste in the handle and then I've just got to stitch that in there and I'm done. So, so probably I need to make an excuse in a way if why yeah. don't I churn out more designs? And it's because it's just me and a couple of, like, I don't have a big company. And your cat. So just do it myself. So so it's just me and um, I have a lovely little part-time team, but we juggle designing and doing fabric in between, you know, a wholesale business, running it all ourselves. It's always quite small. So when we do do a range, I have to put a lot of thought in it because I can't, I can't, as you said, I just can't have it come in and out for three months. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I love to design all the quilts and everything that go with it, you need it to have a longevity that it will that it will this, last a while. This was a big part of my excitement was the fact that here was a designer that not only understood and knew a quilter's needs because you are a quilter, so you understood what sizings, what colors, what contrast yeah. um, that we needed. But also you then put your money where your mouth was and then made the most incredible designs to show off your fabrics. So when you're designing them, like with the with these ones here, and we've got the tile, the tile print there, and that is done to a really specific size. And I see that through all of your designs. It's like, all oh, right, that's why it's that design. Um, and then 
Um, oh yeah, because I, I used to get frustrated. People wouldn't leave you half an inch on a border section so that you could cut two quarter inch seams or, um, or you know, and, and back to Kaufman, who were fantastic, but we don't want you to waste any design space. So we've widened your four panels then, and then they're now 11 and five eighths wide. And I go, I cannot, if you give that to me, when they get to my shop, if I put that in front of a customer, they're going to throw it back at me because the maths is too hard. Yeah. So you have to allow, you have to be so careful that you're giving people something that will work in a large a large design. They can cut it up for a small design. They can fussy cut from it. It can go in a bag. It can go in a quilt. It can go in anything. Um, but they, you don't want them to have any waste. No. They've got to. You know, they've got to be able to use it or see the benefit in using up what's left, I suppose. So, and, and that's what I really see is that there is thought from the beginning conceptually all the way through to the finished designs that you create because you also, you know, you, you have your own shows in Australia that you do and you teach and all those sorts mm -hmm. of things. So... You, you really do put your money where your mouth is like, these are my fabrics and these are the designs and this is how we use them. And, and already I feel like I've, I've almost got a mentor in you with, because I'm learning so much through using your patterns. Um, ah, that's a really interesting way of doing things. That's an, and you, you know, I hadn't thought of doing it that way. So for me, it's such a great education and as I've the, got you making yeah. bags, Natasha. You have well, a, a slightly obsessively. <laughs> I've even bought a new hat stand to hang them all on because I've got <laughs> <a space. laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Wait, do you want to see a funny one? Yeah, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say also you see you do beautiful things like uh, scarves and lens cloths and or, now I'm wearing glasses. I need lens cloths. I've, I realized this in my life. Um, so you also do those accessories that go with it, which is just beautiful. Oh, well, you see, that's the, well, that's, that's kind of like the add on. Um, that's the add on fun thing for us as well. And, and be, because they're Australian, when we do under the Australian sun, because they're Australian flowers or Melba, they're a souvenir if I do gift wear. So we make those to, we sell them into botanical gift shops and, and things. But the quilters love them because they can, they can make a bag and they can have their scarf to match or their pocket mirror or their lens cloth. When, when I, I think, was it the, either the first or second call I ever had with you? You're like, yeah, no. So I've got the scarf and then I've got the sarong. And I was like, hmm sarongs do we need that in this country but you're like no 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 look at all the things you can do with it have you is that is that one that you've got around your neck can you show us all the things that you showed me this one yeah well this, no this is an old hang on this is an old one of mine hang on, i'll get this there's another one here hang on because <laughs> they just breed here they just yeah. oh they're lovely oh i love the orange one the orange yeah i can't believe how popular the orange was I don't know why, because it's a pop. It's a pop of colour. It's beautiful. I mean, you can oh, wear see, and then see pop these big it. waratahs on here. These yeah. big guys. All right. Just so you know, don't tell anyone. No, no, secret safe with me. <laughs> um, the these these come from this original fabric. Well, hang on. Why haven't we got that? Wait, just wait. You will. Have that was the original first big design, and we're redoing that this year. So you will have that. Well, we have it. How, how but it looks it looks so much. I mean, that's that's eleven years ago, but it looks so cool now with the shading and the airbrushing, and it's, it's wow. good. All right. It's, so I'm not going to stand up, or you'll lose me. But okay. all right. So you've got to go round and yeah. under your arms okay it's not going to work is it hang on I can do it I can do it so you're going to go under your arms and then you go around and you twist up that way oh nice how's that see beautiful yes you just work like that yes they're big they're really big yeah 
but they'll still scrunch up really nice and small. You've got these, haven't you? Yeah, I love them. I'm waiting for some. I'm waiting for some beautiful weather to, you know, sarong it up. Sarong it up. Well, I have got mine on today because we're in autumn now and it's getting, it's getting chilly. Now I have to share with you my first ever handbag. Yes, yes, yes. It. Go on, show us. And then the irony is, I need to remake it in Summer Palace. Okay. I mean, you know, when you go for a handbag, you know, you don't just go for like a normal handbag, do you? What was I thinking? I have no idea. I love Look it. Look at that. It's 3D. Beautiful. And it's got a little flap. We, we used to, these are just, these are beautiful to make for wedding parties and things too, because the girls just like having something sturdy to put their spare pantyhose and lippies and things in. No. Um, but I really want to redo this one because it's got all these techniques. It's got 3D flowers, little paper piece, butterflies on the back. Beautiful. So I'm going to do this in Summer Palace Gorgeous. for us. Gorgeous. You and me. He's so old. Poor baby. But I know, nothing simple. What was I thinking? I, in for a penny, in for a pound. I think, that's, I think that's what it is. And then the one that you've got in front of you. This is yours. Yeah. I love I've been sitting oh. here so I'm just sewing your buckles on. Oh thanks. And um that's going that's going in a box to you tomorrow. If I can fit myself in, I will, but if not, I'll just fit the bag in. <laughs> and these are this is it, you know, they are such versatile fabrics, whether you're a quilter, a bag maker, um, you've even got some beautiful oh the brunch jacket. I need to make the brunch jacket. Though so, yeah, you and me both. I need to make another one. Oh, they're just beautiful but then you can do cushions with it they're just incredible hang on what what how have you got a basket with it on my dear dear friend uh leanne church works for me this was my christmas present so look at that she this is called so i wanted to show i wanted to show everyone this because we've all got the old sewing basket yeah in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I had mine as a so old she, from like she Nan. recovered an old one for me. Look at that. Beautiful. Just gorgeous. Oh. So I get to sit this on my desk. But um, I think we all need to get the old one. I've got an old one that's just not coming out. <laughs> that I don't know where it came from. I know. But see, I, you know, it's it's sort of it's Australian, but then I, I appreciate not everyone knows they're Australian, so it's just nice sometimes if people just look at them as a floral. Um, but, but, yeah, and what you were saying, this, this one, this little metallic tonal one that you've got, uh, the little eucalyptus flowers, the flowering gum. Um, we can't call it flowering gum in America because they think of chewing gum and bubble gum. That's really funny. Really? So what do you have to call it? <laughs> eucalyptus which is even more complicated is it but see i like them i like the fact now they just get used as a metallic coordinate not just necessarily because they're part of the collection for sashing and for binding and i am um, i have a bit of a guilt complex with these because um okay. because i absolutely adore them but i use them for linings as well and then i feel bad yeah. Like, I'm like, should I be using such a beautiful fabric to line? Yes. And then, but then you taught me a technique and it took the guilt away a bit, where if you use, so I came away from using H640 and started using a, a heavier interfacing, which meant that then yeah. you get that pop and it looks bound where your seam allowance is. So now I'm like, yeah, we'll just do that then. That's that I love problem. that bag. It's my cork bottom base bag. Yeah, I've got a bit of cork envy. I'll send you some cork. We'll do some fabric swapsies. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, and, and I think actually the cork just works so well with your designs because it's bringing more nature in with nature. You yeah. can't go wrong, can you? It's just, it's just stunning. Yeah, so the what, else, textures. what else is to come? <sighs> right. 
I'm wondering if my family are listening because that'd be like the first time they hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, if not, you know, Steve will find out on Tuesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to dinner. That's so true. <laughs> right. Because of somebody in the UK, we have to print um, that kaleidoscope design in Melbourne behind you again. This one? Yes, but not to miss an opportunity. We're doing a new colourway, mm. which is very, um, oh, I don't want to say, I'm not going to say William Morris. I'm not going to say Liberty. I'm, I don't know, almost Fortnum and Mason kind of um, inspired, Laura Ashley inspired in reds and slate blue and greens. So we'll do new colourways in that. So Amazing. that's happening. There's you like the pink and teal under the Australian sun, don't you? That. Yep. Okay. So it needs to come back through in a border print. So that's coming through in a border print to go with that because then we can do lots, lots more with it. Um, and then we're going, we're, then I am going to do a Japanese collection. I have started it and I've done the panel first. Oh, really? So if you want to look up at any stage, Japanese mon symbols. So they're, they're the Japanese version of a family crest and they're beautiful circular designs with everything from sailing boats to flowers, all, all sorts of things. And I've taken nine floral ones and put them into a panel. So mm. there's maple leaves and irises and cherry blossoms and whole heap, bamboo, whole heap of things. Then. I've taken the flowers out, it's very detailed, I've taken the flowers out and you've got borders top and bottom of all of those and we're going to be able to embellish all of the mon symbols with the flowers. So we're going to take them and do 3D work over the top of the panel. That sounds phenomenal. I love it. And so to... did you design, did you have that project in mind and design the panel to that? Or did you think up this as you were designing the panel? Which way around does it go? Okay. I have a quilt called an Oriental Baltimore. That was the block of the month for many years. And it's literally taking that quilt, which is all needle turn applique with 3D in it. Um, I'll send you a photo and turning that into fabric. So, um, and it's all about the seasons. So one colourway is summer, autumn, another one is spring and winter. And um, then you get all of, then you have coordinates that have got all the leaves with the kanji symbols for the four seasons. And you get a full on floral and a border to go with it. So again, it's very much what you said, it's a project driven um, range. So I will know what the projects and the quilts and everything are before I finish the designs. This so, is the beauty of it because so often people buy fabric and, you know, I'm guilty of it. I've got a stash of fabric and I sit there and I go, I, I, I bought half a meter because that's, you know, it's what you buy, isn't it? And then sometimes it's too much for a project or not enough for a project or I don't actually have a full project in mind or I didn't actually buy the rest of the range. So I don't have any other stuff that coordinates. Then I have yeah. And you get into that spiral. So my my promise to all of my Natasha Makes viewers when I bought your fabrics on board was that it wasn't going to be a case of you buy it and you're left with it. It was a case of you buy it and we will show you multiple things to do. And because this is the other beauty of it, because it's been in print now for 11 years, some of these, um, you know, it's not just going to run out and then you can't get any more. So, you, you know, I mean, it might take me a couple of weeks to get it shipped from Australia or we might have to wait for a reprint in Japan but it will be here. So yeah. when you're buying it, you're buying it knowing that it's not the end of it. And that actually, if you decide to do a large quilt in it, that actually it's okay because there will be more fabric coming through for you to then do some matching cushions or to reupholster a needle case or, you know, something, you know, there, there's going to be things that you can add on rather than just making that initial outlay and going, you know, maybe I want to do a quilt for a bedroom. 
oh, okay, but there's nothing else out there like it. So suddenly this room is going to have to be eclectic or I have to put that quilt away and start again. Whereas now, actually, maybe you can you can do a lampshade to match or all of these things. So you can either make a room of it in your home or as one lovely lady said, uh, Deborah, she's like, well, my house just looks like a boutique now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit obsessed with Lisa's fabrics. I'm like, yeah, it gets you like that. But they also make gorgeous, gorgeous gifts. So um, that for me is is again a, an absolute joy of these is that you know you can for example this was the first first of your bags that were made mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't get your actual handle so the handle is slightly different there we've now managed to source the handles that you've got so it does it's a slightly different shape to yours but um, I love this and it's gorgeous I like that one that with a pair of jeans, brown boots, you know, yeah. white, white little top, Aaron cardigan, I'm out, I'm done. Brown, brown belt, out the door. But feeling ridiculously elegant because of a bag. And yet in the same clothes that I did the school running. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. Um, I it's only recently, I have to confess. It's only recently that I've started using my own bags. What? I know. Why? Because I don't know. It's I'm just self-conscious about um, wearing my own. I don't know if it felt like work or whatever, but just one day I walked past one in my studio and I just went, okay, that's it. That's mine. And now I use it. It's the same shape as the same, same pattern as the black fan one that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just now I use it all the time. I don't know. It was maybe I was a bit self conscious, but but I very embarrassingly stopped a lady in her tracks in a town last week. I was out with mum and we were in a coffee shop getting a coffee, and this lady walked past with a bag, and my mum didn't know what was going on because I did a run out the door and I just went, "Hey, hey, hey!" She just looked at me, "What, what, what?" I said nice bag and she had it was just a I've never seen one out before there was just a bag made up of scraps of all of my fabrics and just like nice bag and she went oh thank you I um yeah I had some leftover from a quilt that I made you know from from some Australian designer I bought a kit online somewhere where I said it's a lovely bag and I still didn't tell her who I was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just didn't want to embarrass her, so I just went away. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Mum said, you're unbelievable. So I just <laughs> had to tell her it was a nice bag. I'm sure she meant that in the best of ways. Um, oh, gosh, what else? I had so many things I wanted to ask you. Oh, 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 so I'm going to quote you back at you. You told me that there are only six ways to make a bag. Yes. Six ways. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers. Six ways to make a bag. <laughs> oh, Lord. Have um, I got them all here? I don't know. But. There, but okay, we can have a go. Okay, so that is my challenge. And then you said, you know, so in my book, oh, wait, sorry, what? Where is this book? It's Why don't we book. have it? It's just a little, it's booklet. just a little booklet. Do you need the booklet? Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to we print can do it this. here. That's we- fine. We can get close between us. You ready? Okay. I'm looking around this room going, where am I going to get them from? Okay. Pinwheel base. Yeah. Do you make a little dilly bag that's got like a little pinwheel? We did your flower pot holder with that. Right. That's that's number one. Okay. Because that in a bigger version could have handles on it. Amazing. Or you could gather it up with a sleeve at the top and make a little drawstring bag. Gorgeous. Okay, number one. Number two, um, the one, this one, all in one base and sides. Right. So that is is all the way around. Okay. Okay. Which ones have you made? Now that that is the same as that one you're putting in a frame because (gasps) it goes all the way around. No, this this one just doesn't guess it. 
that's just got a gusset. Oh no, that's got a gusset. A lie. That's that's a different one again. That's a curved face and sides. Hang on, I'm going to another one. What's this one? <laughs> <laughs> right. This one is. I've got this yeah, one. Yeah, that's a wraparound base and sides. Oh, yes. which I love. And incidentally, treated myself to uh, the stripe nice. lining. Yep. So that's also wraparound base and sides. Yeah. Um, and I've tapered it. The sides just go out. And that one behind you, your novel one behind you is the same on the wall. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, now, do you like this one? Oh, For your purple look lovers. Look at all your flowers <laughs> on there. Oh. <laughs> so which one's this we one? Went, went a little bit silly, but that's one as well. Um, right. So we need to do a curved base at some stage. Okay. We'll get there. I'll, I'll we'll, we'll do one and you can you can do it on a Monday. All right. Okay. I'm just trying to think because um, does that count as a curved base? No, that's a flat bag. Now, because it didn't have a separate base or anything. So that's, hey, okay. still beautiful. It's still beautiful. But that's just called a flat bag because you don't have any separate side gusset or base. You put darts in to give it its 3D. Right. Okay. Effect, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we're nearly up to five. That's that's six because it's pre-shaped, and then okay. it's whip stitched together. So it's a constructed bag. Right. But I've got more. So Ooh, what do you want to see? Six? A really cool one. Come yeah. On. Yeah. 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 Now you're into my to-do list bag. <laughs> look at look at that! Isn't that cute? Ah, uh, yes. I love that. You the know dragons. that it's going to have to be in, made with insulated whatever so that I can have that as a lunchbox bag. See, it's in progress. The draft of the pattern's inside, see? Nice. <laughs> nice. I love that. Look at those. I love that. Beautiful. That's a wraparound base inside. So have I got to five or six yet? I don't know. I must have. I don't know. They're not all here. Well, Probably. we'll just have to get the booklet. And then, and then we'll know. All right. Then we will know. Then uh, we will know. Lisa, thank How's you. your ruching going? My ruching. Oh, yes. Good ruching. I'm going to be ruching in the week. That's how my week is panning out. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these different techniques. And the other thing we need to do is some origami, some fabric origami. Oh, yes. We've got that on a quilt to do. There's so much. And, um, so much to do. There is a lot to do. But the other thing that you said to me is that, you know, your your bag designs and things like that, they not only do they look obviously amazing in your own designs, but they also look great. And this was when you had me um, in cave. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, the lady likes cave. We're going to get on. That's fine. <laughs> I've got, I've actually got a pattern called Summer Palettes, not the fabric range. And I designed it. Rob took me, we won't talk about how long ago, to Beijing for my 40th. Right. Um, and it's designed off all of the red uh, framework on the doors and the windows at the Summer Palace in Beijing. And um, so that's how long that range was in development, only a decade. Um, and it, so it's all different sort of vertical and horizontal panels. And it takes 21 UK fat quarters or metric fat quarters. And I just want to wrap up with love about 21 K fat quarters and just pop them in with a dark blue or a dark gray sashing. Oh, just yeah. I need I need to go and shop on your website and just buy 21 fat quarters. You know, I've got a few kicking about. Just, just a few. Here and there. Just a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lisa, thank you. I'm going to let you go because it's your evening and it's a Sunday and this will go out on a bank holiday in the UK. 
Um, so this will go out on May bank holiday. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm well, listen, different. thank you. Thank you for all your support and also to, to all the wonderful quilters that have um, been so nice and bought my fabric so far from you. It's been a joy. It's been oh. lovely and very inspirational for me to keep going. Well, please do keep going because we need more. <laughs> We're not greedy. We just want more, please. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your evening and thank you so, so much. My pleasure. Thank Take you. Care. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.